The subject of animal danger is complex, and we sometimes misunderstand nature's signals. The howl of the wolf has for centuries made humankind cringe with fear. It's ironic that no human fatality has ever been recorded in North America from a wolf. Yet the gentle looking deer, like this graceful whitetail, account for over 100 human deaths each year. There are a variety of reasons why animals are dangerous to humans and to other animals as well. I'm Marty Stout. Join me. Let's separate fact from phobia as we explore dangerous encounters. Territorial markings, like these grisly claw scratches, are a sign to all those who trespass that they do so at some risk. I should have been more attentive to the warnings. When we are careless or unheeding, we can be more than surprised. And there is only one animal that can hope to survive a fight with a grizzly bear, another grizzly. This battle is over a female. Sometimes it's over territory, but whatever the reason, they are not struggling to the death. Their combat is fought according to ritualized rules that all bears understand. When one gets the upper hand, the other surrenders. Animals are dangerous to humans in large part because we don't understand their rules. Sometimes we think we've trained them to obey our rules. As this news video clearly shows, it's a dangerous and foolhardy assumption. <laughs> Grizzly attacks on humans are rare, but these medical photos show the power they wield. Even experienced handlers, like these scientists tagging a tranquilized wild grizzly, can be surprised by their ferocity. These naturalists escape without a scratch. Some are not so lucky. In Montana, a game warden is relocating a nuisance bear to the Bob Marshall Wilderness Area when the bear turns on him. The bear is killed with a pistol shot from the warden's gun. The warden fares better suffering a broken leg, cuts and bruises. Some days as a game warden are harder than others.
It is common to equate dangerous animals with the male of the species, but when a mother of any animal, human or otherwise, thinks she is protecting her young, look out. It's autumn in Alaska. Winter is fast approaching, and the black bears are preparing for hibernation. With poor vision, the bear must rely on its keen sense of smell to detect distant objects. This mother bear has just caught the scent of two wildlife watchers, one with a camera recording the scene and one with a rifle for protection. Because her cubs are nearby, she is particularly watchful. She's behind the tree. I got her. Stay with her. There she comes. Her. She's coming at us a little, though. She's charging, man. Okay, get your gun ready. I've got it ready. I won't shoot unless she gets too close. Okay, don't shoot. I want to turn as long as you can't hit this way. Here she comes. Gosh, she's coming fast. Oh, oh, oh don't shoot. Oh. Shoot, shoot, shoot. That will have to now. That scared her. Scared her. Well, I'm still filming her. I don't know what you're doing. Tom's filming her. I was about to run. <laughs> Stay right on her. I think she's going to turn around. I hope she doesn't come again. If she keeps coming. I'll leave the camera running. All right. We're out of here. Where are the cubs? Behind the trees, I think. She charges to protect her young because of the perceived threat, whether it's real or not. A similar perceived threat is played out with another species of dangerous animal in Anchorage. During a harsh Alaskan winter, with its deep snow, many animals starve. So some of them wander into town, like this moose and her calf, to find food. What happens next on this home video looks like a calculated attack. seems to be random violence is anything but. The moose had been harassed for hours by students throwing snowballs. The female became so agitated that a man innocently walking by was stomped to death. We are supposed to be the intelligent species, but sometimes we forget to act like it, and innocent bystanders pay the price. Eighty thousand elk live in Wyoming's forests, and I approach these thousand-pound bulls with caution. But this is not their mating season, and I am not encroaching on their territory, so they don't seem the least bit aggressive. My horse, Buck, does not share my confidence. It's not unusual to see bulls away from the cows. They lead separate lives much of the year. Let's go. Come on, Maggie. As unconcerned as these bulls are about my presence, the story is quite different with a herd of female elk and their young in Yellowstone Park. Crew member David Huey is about to learn an important lesson about the motherly instinct. In an attempt to get back to where we are filming, David takes a shortcut. He's been around animals long enough to know better. If you think that a grizzly bear can be mean, you've never come across a mother elk defending her calf. cow sounds a warning to the other elk and to David by grinding her teeth. Hey, whoa! Uh oh. Uh oh, whoa! Whoa! 
David barely pulls off a bluff. Whoa! Whoa! As fair warning for all of you who think these docile looking elk are friendly and approachable, they are not. Don't ever approach wild animals this way, especially a mother and her young. It's a mistake many people make in Yellowstone. The animals seem tame and gentle, but looks can be deceiving. As these home videos show, even the awesome bison seems docile enough to pet. Point to the buffalo. Point the buffalo. Where's the buffalo? But these are not predictable creatures. They are wild animals in a domesticated setting. Some visitors are tempted to get just a little closer to these marvelous beasts. But when you see one paw the ground, like this bison behind the tree, beware. This tourist was fortunate. He escaped with only a gash in the leg. But he can confirm that even though wildlife looks harmless, it is still wild. One factor in making wild animals dangerous to humans is the friendly and caring act of feeding them. People love to feed wild animals. It gets them close to these fascinating creatures. But today, the sheer volume of people who do this has taught the animals that we are a wonderfully easy source of food. Usually, animals must work hard to survive. When we make it easier for them, this closeness comes at a cost for both the wild animal and for us. As these animals cease to fear human contact, they become more and more destructive and potentially dangerous. At this cabin, a well-meaning occupant regularly feeds the black bears which inhabit the area. These are big bears with big appetites. And once they have eaten the easy food and are still hungry, their keen sense of smell leads them right to the source, inside the cabin.
the bears finally give up and go looking elsewhere. Not all dangerous animals are large. Some of the most deadly are small. The very sound of bees can send people ducking for cover. This bear's thick fur coat protects it from stings, except around its eyes and on its nose. It's ironic that this black bear poses less of a threat to humans than the bees it is enduring. Bees kill about 50 people a year, the second deadliest killer among animals. Except for allergic reaction, it's not the single bee sting that makes these insects so dangerous. It is the sheer number of stings they will inflict. Except for intrusions like these, honeybees are not usually very aggressive or tenacious. That may be changing. Enter the Africanized bee, the killer bee. In recent years, the killer bee has migrated from South America into Texas and, unless stopped, will continue to swarm into other states as well. These Africanized bees are called killers because they are ten times more aggressive than the ordinary honeybee. Their vicious swarms can result in thousands of stings. Along the rocky coast of the Pacific, sea meets land in a rush of timeless beauty. And under the sea, a whole new world. But great danger also lurks here, sometimes not where you'd expect. The fragile looking jellyfish injures large numbers of divers each year. The killer whale, on the other hand, for all its size and power, is, for the most part, harmless to humans. It usually dines on these playful pinnipeds. Elsewhere in the shallows, a creature lurks that makes divers and swimmers more than a bit cautious, the shark. Even its name conjures up dark images. Sharks are unpredictable creatures. If a shark is not hungry, it may completely ignore potential prey. Or it may take a bite just to see if it is hungry. Of all sharks, the most deadly to humans, as well as to seals, is the great white. Over 20 feet long, its powerful jaws studded with rows of razor-sharp teeth, there is no more menacing creature in the world. The largest flesh-eating fish in the sea, it rivals the killer whale as the number one eater of seals. But the great white shark is often a man-eater by mistake. To the shark, a seal is a meal. And from a shark's eye view, a person on a shorty surfboard looks a lot like a seal. Bloodstained surfboard is found off the coast of California. Sometime later, the mutilated body of a 24-year-old surfer clad in this wetsuit is washed ashore. 
one more victim of this awesome underwater predator. Far from the hunters of the sea is one of North America's largest land predators, the mountain lion or cougar. Its preferred food is larger hoofed animals, like these bighorn sheep. Cougars regularly hunt these majestic animals, stalking, then ambushing their prey. An elegant stride and lightning fast speed have made it a most efficient hunter. Swift, healthy ones often escape. The sick or lame are usually singled out for pursuit. This cat does not kill for sport, but for food. And what it cannot consume right away, it buries for later. Development of wild lands has made its food increasingly scarce and has forced the cougar closer to the animal it fears most, the human. Whether just in search of a meal or trying to protect its shrinking territory, some cougars have boldly dragged dogs from porches and have even attacked joggers and skiers, mauling and sometimes killing them. This lucky man might have gotten more than a scratch because recently there has been a marked increase in cougar attacks and killings of humans. We all need to be cautious in cougar country. Although the sight and sometimes the very thought of spiders scare many people, most spiders seem more dangerous to humans than they are. But a few species do live up to the spider's reputation. Drop for drop, the venom from this black widow is more powerful than the rattlesnakes and accounts for most of the medically treated spider bites. But with some awareness of their nesting spots, such as under lumber piles, we can avoid the shy creatures. 
Despite their beneficial role of controlling the insect population, we just can't seem to befriend the beast. Maybe it's the furry legs and belly, or the multiple eyes, but there is something about these arachnids that makes us shiver. Like the lightning speed of this wolf spider. spider's aquatic relative, the diving spider, has strong jaws for gripping and eight eyes for seeing prey in almost any direction. It has adapted the land spider's hunting techniques to its watery habitat. It waits patiently at the water's edge to spot prey below. It injects the minnow with poison and then pulls it up on shore for a seafood dinner. One of the deadliest of all creatures is also one of the smallest and oldest. One hundred to two hundred million years ago, this creature emerged from stagnant waters and began to kill. It has managed to kill more people than all the wars in history. It is the mosquito. It kills by picking up deadly diseases from one animal's blood and inadvertently injecting them into another. The mosquito tracks us down by sensing the carbon dioxide from our breath. Then using two tiny saws, it breaks past the skin surface to the life-giving blood below. I don't have to look for mosquitoes. They always seem to find me but not so for the larger creatures. This traditional swamp boat is called a pea It's the best way to navigate here and to quietly approach animals like this alligator snapping turtle. It's named for the alligator-like ridges on its back. but it's the real alligator I'm looking for. There is no question of this ancient creature's danger. It attacks a dozen people a year in the United States, but only when agitated or very hungry. I don't plan to be a meal, so I keep my distance. The American alligator is the largest of our reptiles. Its various sized teeth are only for seizing and holding prey, not for chewing. A group of hungry gators considers this nutria as a possible meal. This large aquatic rodent is common in the marshes of Louisiana and spreading rapidly. But not if these gators have anything to say about it. Either.
when night falls in the swamp, it's all the more hushed and haunting. Some men brave the dark, even with the danger lurking out there. Raw liver is attractive to a hungry catfish. Catfish are not the only creatures lured by this bait. They keep their distance. Humans are still to be feared. Fortunately, most alligator attacks are not fatal and can usually be avoided, unless the gators are very hungry. night wears on, the alligator's hunger grows, making them more bold. Tired from a long night of fishing, the angler is less aware and less cautious than he should be. Had he seen what took his catch, he might have been better prepared for what was to come. Alligators can be aggressive, but common sense and appropriate caution will greatly minimize the chances of such an attack. Of all reptiles, snakes are the most feared and misunderstood. Snake dens, like this one in Canada, look to many people like their worst nightmare come true. Reptiles are cold-blooded creatures. Their body temperature depends completely on their surroundings. Many snakes can survive winter only by hibernating in caves where the temperature stays above freezing. As springtime warms the rocks around limestone sinkholes in Manitoba, the red-sided garter snakes that winter here emerge by the thousands. More snakes than can be seen at one time anywhere else in the world. Even though these garter snakes are not poisonous, our tendency is to destroy any snake. These reptiles have always had a bad name. Are they just scaly monsters, ugly at best and dangerous at worst? Even the mention of the name, snake, can paralyze some people. They cannot separate the creepy but beneficial 
from the creepy and harmful. One of the most dangerous North American reptiles is the deadly rattlesnake. It accounts for over 10 human fatalities a year. Animals too, like this careless peccary, are well aware of the rattler's bite. Rattlesnakes evolved during the Pleistocene era, the age of giant mammals, when horses, camels, and bison roamed the earth. The rattle evolved as an alarm bell, which would drive away creatures that might have trampled the snake. This wildlife watcher is engrossed in his hobby, observing the birds and plants of the Arizona desert. Rattlesnake bites resulting in injury or even death are sometimes the result of our lack of awareness. When striking a human, the rattlesnake regulates the amount of poison it injects. This venom secretion evolved as a method of securing food, but in the case of humans, the bite is the snake's attempt at self-defense. A facial pit, located behind the nostril, detects objects with a higher temperature than their surroundings. This adaptation helps snakes locate and strike at warm-blooded prey. Unfortunately for this hiker, diamondback rattlesnakes do not always warn their victims. Fortunately, rattlesnakes often strike without injecting any venom. Even if they do, most rattlesnake bites are not fatal when treated promptly. The rattlesnake bite in this medical photograph is less than an hour old. But these other photos graphically illustrate what happens if venomous snake bites are left untreated too long. Focused on our own fears, we often forget that dangerous encounters are usually between animals themselves, and often in surprising ways. Among the dry scrub of California is the deadly Pacific rattlesnake. The sound of its rattle does not frighten its arch enemy, the California banded king snake. predatory king snake seizes the rattler and begins constriction. The tenacious rattlesnake does not give up its life easily. Even after death, its reflexes can still be quite active. In fact, humans have been bitten hours after they thought they had killed a rattlesnake. All snakes are carnivores 
but few species have the skill or necessary antitoxin in their blood to attack and devour a rattlesnake. It's no wonder they were given the name king snake, although coach whips also dine on their poisonous kin. The king snake tugs and pulls at the lifeless coils straightening the carcass for easier swallowing. King snakes have the unique ability to devour other snakes much longer than themselves. This king snake literally folds the rattlesnake in half within its stomach cavity. Bones, scales, and even rattles are completely digested. When it comes to animals that are dangerous to each other, one ferocious little creature comes to mind. Grasshopper mice are not known for their cuteness, but for their vicious disposition. This species breaks all the rules about rodents. It hunts and howls like a tiny wolf. Hardly bigger than a house mouse, this predator stalks and kills insects, poisonous snakes, even deadly scorpions. Grasshopper mice are not only carnivores, but cannibals. This stranger is lucky to escape with its life. The hungry mouse spies a tarantula and a scorpion. The toxins secreted by a tarantula's fangs are no more fatal than a bee sting, but the short bristles on its abdomen, which it combs off and throws, are extremely irritating to its enemies. Even so, the tarantula is no match for the deadly scorpion. The struggle between these arachnids draws the attention of two grasshopper mice. sting of a scorpion can be fatal, even to humans. So how do these mice stand a chance? At first it looks like an easy victory for the scorpion, but the grasshopper mouse is also known as scorpion mouse, and this pair is not about to shirk their reputation. first instinct is to go for the head. Another method is to attack the tail and bite off the stinger.
one final furious struggle, and then the howl of victory is followed by a well-earned feast. Even though it is most natural for one species to be aggressive toward another, we humans have always thought ourselves immune from these belligerences. Far to the west, in the vast Pacific Ocean, pods of pilot whales roam the sea. Many experienced divers have made hundreds of dives around these enormous mammals without incident. They are usually very shy. But this time, off the coast of Hawaii, an experienced diver and an experienced cameraman are about to have a unique encounter. Instead of ignoring the diver as usual, this pilot whale seems curious and allows the diver to approach and even pet it the first time ever in the wild. Perhaps she should have been alert to the odd behavior when the whale looks her straight in the eye. Suddenly, the whale lunges. It follows and grabs her by the leg, dragging her deeper and deeper. This remarkable footage reveals her struggle. Finally, she breaks free, leaving one of her swim fins on its way to the bottom of the ocean. No one can be sure, but it looked like the whale was just being playful. Pilot whales are, after all, carnivores. If it had wanted a meal, it could have snapped her leg like a matchstick and devoured it. Yet she suffered only a few cuts. How was the whale to know that its playmate needed to breathe a lot more often than it did? The frozen reaches of the north are home to a carnivore that has always been associated with danger, the polar bear. This 10-foot, ton-and-a-half beast has broken into houses looking for food and even eaten family dogs. But what it likes most are seals and walrus. The bears will drift on ice floes hundreds of miles just to make one a meal. But there is no denying that when they are being playful, like when this group encountered a tundra buggy, they are just plain cute. As cute as they are, they are also enormously powerful. Even though playfulness or family quarrels are not usually harmful to each other, if that swipe of the paw or nip at the jaw is aimed at a human, that's another story.
there have been several close human encounters with a polar bear named Binky here at the Anchorage, Alaska Zoo. I feel sorry for animals like Binky. The loneliness and boredom he must feel sometimes leads to incidents where the bear is only being playful but simply doesn't know its own strength. Like this attack on an Australian tourist who gets too close to the cage while taking pictures. Oh my god. Oh my god. Get a gun! Tranquilizer gun! Tranquilizer gun! The tourist suffered serious injury. But this was not the only mauling for Binky. One young man wandered near the cage at night, after zoo hours. Um, he didn't seem to want to like kill me or anything. Um, having tremendous scars on my legs for the rest of my life is going to remind me of this every time. And uh, that's what's going to teach me a lesson. Whether the captive animal was protecting his territory or just wanting to play, the human was the intruder and must take responsibility for his carelessness. Animals like these don't have animosity. They act on instinct. And sometimes their instinct is just to play. Whatever their instinct, Wild animals like these Alaskan muskox are quick and violent at times and can be intimidating by their sheer size. This arctic lemming is more than 1,000 times smaller than the ox and is in constant jeopardy from the massive hooves. Yet the muskox means no harm to the lemming. It is simply attending to its own agenda, finding a few shards of grass in this frozen land. We can learn a lot from encounters like these. Just because animals are wild, and even deadly, does not mean they intend harm. Animals can be at once silly and magnificent, and at the same time, untouchably wild and touchingly tame. The concept of wild could be the most confusing of our animal ideas. And that could be a wild animal's greatest problem. It's up to us to find a way to accommodate their instincts so that we can all, great and small, occupy the same planet. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America. <laughs>